Hi, I'm Denise, and I'm a messenger of God and a deliverer of his prophetic teaching. I am commissioned and on assignment from the Lord to you. Yes, you woman of God. He sent me to help you move, move beyond barriers and obstacles which prevent you from framing your world and creating that impactful life that God has ordained for you. And so lately, the Lord has been dealing with me on the word elevation. And I've done two previous videos on elevation, and I won't recap it here. If you want to view those last two teachings, you can listen to those on my YouTube channel in The Flourishing Life. And that's F-L-O-U-R-I, capital S-H-E-N-G. But this week, I'm talking about elevation and community. So what's a community? According to community in psychology, a community is a social system which is distinct and it impacts and informs an individual's life. It's in essence an environment and a set relationship or even feelings. Now Webster's Dictionary defines community as a group of people living in the same place or having a particular characteristic in common. It can also mean a feeling of fellowship with others, like sharing common attitudes and interests and goals. But the best definition of community to me is simply this. It's a unified body of individuals, those who have a common interests and like-mindedness. And we women, we're a part of microsystems, which include our friends, our families, our coworkers, if we have them. We also have organizational communities, with the, which is our schools, our workplace environment, neighborhood associations, and our churches. And we have macro systems, which are the larger systems, which are broader and they contain a diverse um, array of behaviors and ideas like our culture, our societies, our governments and our belief systems. So since 2019, we've experienced a different type of community due to COVID-19. We left gathering in person and then we began gathering much, much more online. The online community has grown by leaps and bounds, and particularly in business, in education, the church, and social media. There has been a great increase of people in the church community online, and many prophetic words are now going forth on places like YouTube, on Periscope, on all these different avenues. So we can go onto any platform and hear what's being said in the Word of God. And this is great increase for the most part and it is also good. But we have an enemy who disguises the Lord's work. He is a deceiver and an accuser of the brethren according to 2 John 7 and Revelations 12 and 10. And we have to be led by the spirit of God to understand who and what we are to be a part of. There are communities of Satan. Yes, I said it. There are churches and communities of Satan according to Revelation 3 and 9. He has a macro system in the earth, which he uses to deceive people. We have to be elevated. We have to be in Christ so deep and in his word so clearly and in his presence at all times. It's vital for us to be in the Lord's face, covering ourselves with his word. This is why the scriptures say, hide thy word in my heart so that I might not sin against you. You see, women of God is the little things. It's the small things in our lives that we want to continue to do, continue to say. And God is calling us to come higher, to come and be in his face, his presence, so he can keep us from the devices of the enemy. God is calling you into a higher place in the kingdom of heaven, and he is calling us to enter in and abide there. Elevation in the spirit can cause us to live in the spirit. And then we'll be able to discern what communities we can and should not be a part of. And I hear the Holy Spirit saying that he's been tugging on some of your hearts to stop watching certain things on certain sites. Some of you are married and some of you are on in online dating sites. Some of you are in sites which speak to the universe and manifestation type sites, the law of attraction. And do you notice that those things are manifesting that which is enticing you but it's not edifying your spirit. It's only feeding your soul desires and not the desires of God for your life. Now, we can't say that what, what God says we can't have, we can have it, but we have to frame our worlds 
according to the word of God. And not for things, but for his will. With his will comes abundance, but it starts from the inside out. And some of us are insights that are enticing us and intriguing us to act on those things which we're commenting on and watching. And God is saying to us, come out from amongst them and be ye separate, for he is the Lord. And he sees you and he desires so much more for you. Some, some people are angry and resentful and are seeking out people to cast unlawful and illegal prayers on them because they want to get revenge. But that's praying in the wrong spirit. And God is saying, vengeance is mine. I will repay. So we have to come out of that, come out of that, because we're being ensnared by our world, words and the communities which we have aligned ourselves with. And there's a new sense of community, so much online, but the Lord wants us to be mindful of who and what types of communities we are becoming a part of. Also, on the other hand, we're not islands unto ourselves. And he understands that we have to be careful of who we're connecting ourselves to, but also to become a part of the community that he leads us to. So in the scriptures, there are God's kinds of communities. And these are communities where the Lord desires us to be uh, together in aligning ourselves to. God's first community was the children of Israel. And these people were his people and his community. And you'll find that in Genesis 23, Exodus 12, you know, all over the scriptures, really, the people of Israel were always God's community. There are communities which are like-minded in Christ who desire God and his will. And those communities are communities he desires you to be a part of. He will lead you. But first, he's asking you to commune in his presence. We have to ask his Holy Spirit to guide us, and he will. And then when he guides you, you'll know them by their fruit. You'll ask these type of questions. Well, what is this community doing? What does this community believe? And what types of things is this community involved in? Is this community according to alignment of God in me? Does this community resonate with the Holy Spirit? Is this community affirmed and confirmed by Holy Spirit? So be sure that the scriptures are sure. Whatsoever you sow, you reap. The reaping of the community of you are, you are a part of. Is it the community of the kingdom of God? And if it's confirmed by the Holy Spirit, then God is saying yes. But if it's not, he's saying no. So let's not jump around in communities and say that this is where God has led us. It's the same thing as people say we jumped around in churches. We have to go into a community that will teach us how to grow and learn with responsibility and accountability. We have to go where a community is building you up and edifying you and speaking truth of God's word and love. Don't harm yourself by jumping in and out of places because you want it to feel good to your soul. We don't want to be procrastinators. We don't want to uh, make our contributions to our bodies, our flesh, our soul in the wrong places because we want to bear fruit for the kingdom of God. There's a scripture in the Bible that talks about Jesus and he was passing through Bethany and he was hungry. And off in the distance, he saw a fig tree that was all leafed out. So he headed to it to see if it might have any fruit. But when he reached it, he only found leaves because the fig season hadn't come. And as the disciples stood by Jesus, he pronounced a curse on that tree. And he said, no one will ever eat fruit from your branches again. And this is the only recorded time in the gospels where Jesus used his supernatural power to destroy. The tree was fully leafed out. And this is a stage when after that comes the figs, but not before. And because the tree looks as though it ought to have fruit, but it doesn't, it's a perfect illustration of people who believe they have the good fruit, even though their actions are void and as empty, empty and useless as their leaves. And so Jesus cursed the tree, not out of anger with the tree, but as a warning to those of us who think that appearance is more important than the fruit of our actions. So let's ask ourselves these questions. What community am I a part of? Is this where Holy Spirit needs me to be? 
Am I here contributing, growing, producing, or am I just a tree full of leaves? Is this community pleasing to God or is this pleasing to my flesh? And when you answer these questions and others that will come up in your heart as you ponder the communities that you are indulging in and being a part of, I pray that Holy Spirit speak to your heart. And as you get rid of the little things, as you consider and check your tree, I pray that you do whatever he's asking of you to be in the community you need to be in as a part of his kingdom. He also has a macro system greater than all other macro systems. And he has a community of people that will help you to bear fruit. And then your fruit will remain. You see, women of God, we need each other. We are one blood and one nation of believers in Christ. So remember this as you seek to be a community. And remember that the Lord is here to help you and elevate you more and more in him as you trust him, as you believe in him, as you go forward in him. There, is, um, there was a, a woman that I spoke to over uh, the weekend. And we talked about uh, building a community here where I live, a community of business owners who are women. And she said something that I wanted to share with you. She said, I would love to build a community, but you know how we are. We don't like to uh, respond and, and be with one another because we're competitive. And I said, yeah, I said, you know, most of the time when that happens, um, there has been some burning of bridges, some burning out, some women who've trusted other women who could not be trusted. And as a result, now they're pulled back in their heart and they don't want to join with other women because of that trust being broken. I said, so in order to build trust, we have to talk to one another face to face and really bear our hearts and, and understand what our motivations are. And if we fit, fine. And if we don't, we don't. But don't let it be a competition and a comparison of who's better than who and who, who is this and who is that. So my thought was to approach every woman personally and be personable with her and share with her the vision of building bridges and not burning them and see where it goes. All we can do is be our most authentic and transparent selves. And that's all that we really ask of one another. And there's been a long time since I've seen communities of women that are gathered together to build instead of burn. So think about the communities that you're in. Are you there as an active participant? Are you building the bridges in that community or are you burning bridges? Are you a part of a community to edify and help and stretch and, and, and be a blessing in? Or are you there just to be served? Because even Jesus said he came not to be served, but to serve. So if you're in communities and you're only there to glean from it, if you're a type of person or type of woman who sits back and just observes, it's now time to find out for yourself. Are you wasting time in your observation? Are you ready to dig your heels in and build? Or are you there just to burn? And if you're there just to burn, it's not going to be helpful for you, woman. It's not going to be helpful for you. You see, the thief comes to steal, to kill, and destroy. But Jesus came that we might have abundant lives. That means edified and built up, not burned down to the ground. So that's it. The Lord wanted to talk about elevating in our communities, not just to sit back and observe, not just to go in to burn, but to go in and to be an active participant in the community and build one another up. Women of God, we need to build each other, not to burn each other, not to talk about one another, not to look down on one another, but to really embrace each other's unique individuality and unique gifts. Not to judge one another because you have a disagreement of opinion. We are all allowed that, right? But even in our disagreements, let's agree to still build. Let's agree to still love. Let's agree to still use the gifts that God has given us to be a blessing to one another because that's what the Flourishing Life Group is all about. We're about building, not burning. We're about elevation, 
and not stagnation. We're about going about and being about the Father's business in the kingdom and not procrastination. So I thank you for listening to us. I thank you for listening to me and giving me your time today. And I hope and pray that the Lord will place you in your right community and that you will build your community and not burn it down. Thank you so much. Until the next time, you all be blessed and may the Lord keep you and grant you his peace in today's times. Bye.